What's going on? Welcome to this video clip of my Share the Knowledge podcast. I'm DJ TLM, and if you want to check out the full episode of the podcast, make sure you check out the link in the description box down below. Let's get into the video. Today's podcast is brought to you by Banzoogle. All right, this one I want to talk about as well. This is a comment that was left under my how to deal with song request videos. And in that video, I talk about how you can how you can deal with people requesting songs. It's something that DJs have to deal with when you're playing in a club. You're going to have people walk up to the booth asking you all sorts of things, uh, bothering you in certain cases. And for some DJs, it's perfect. They don't mind. They'll play anything. For other DJs, it's like their worst nightmare. They do not want to hear anyone's request. You have to figure out what works for you. But in that video, I explain how I deal with it. And um, yeah, it's a well-received video. But this is a comment here, and the comment is, never say no. Always be positive, even if you're not going to play it at the end. Chances are they'll be too drunk or busy to remember. Of course, if they keep coming, you might just try to play it. And if you surely can't, then just say, well, sorry, I can't find it for now. Never say haven't got it, especially if it's a kind of hit or popular um, yeah, I totally disagree. <laughs> Just like that. I understand where you're coming from. And I do agree that you always want to communicate with the patron, with the customer, with the client, even though they're not your client. They're visiting the club and you're playing for that club. Um, you always want to communicate with them in a way that can be considered positive positive. You don't want to be the grumpy DJ just dismissing someone. I mean, if you can prevent it. If you know for a fact that you have a hard time staying positive when people approach you, then it's probably even a better idea to have someone else at the booth, in the booth, who can just keep those people away from you so you don't have to communicate with them. But if you are the one in the booth and people are coming up to you, um, if I don't have a song or I don't plan to play a song, I will let the person know. Now, some DJs, and I can't say if that's the case for this DJ, some DJs fear that they're going to upset someone and that they might complain about you. I just totally don't care about that. I don't. Now, I definitely used the excuse of not being able to find it. Back in the days, I didn't have to because I had vinyl, and if I didn't have it, I didn't have it. But even then, I had some song requests that I didn't want to play then. And even though I had the vinyl, I would just tell them, I, I don't know where it is. I can't find it. I have the, the sleeve right here, but it's not in there. I mean, yes, you would lie sometimes. But uh, with Serato, I've done the same thing. Like someone would request something. I would actually just go over to my laptop, pretend for a second that I was looking for a song, and then tell them like, I don't, I don't see it. I don't understand. It's not here. Um, I kind of stopped doing that at a certain point. I just don't feel I want to spend any time being, I don't want to say fake, but I don't want to spend any time on something like that. So I don't want to take time away from my performance to act like I'm looking for a song when I know already that I'm not going to play that song. So I'm just very upfront with that now. And it's not gonna like I'm gonna say it in a crazy negative way, but to me, this is not like hostage negotiation where you can't say no or otherwise something bad will happen. I, I believe that's one of the rules that they never want to just say no and just twist it in a different way. We're DJs, so if I'm playing and someone requests a song and I just know that I'm not gonna play that song, maybe because it just totally doesn't fit the circumstance or more importantly, because I just totally don't like and never play that song. So if someone requests a song that I don't play, I'll just tell them, no, sorry, I'm not going to play that. You can ask the other DJ. I don't care. I don't care if the person would complain or tell their friends, like, no, I don't like that DJ uh, because he didn't have that song. I could really care less. I'm not there to build this perception that I'm like this great guy playing everything. If I don't play that, I don't play that, and I'll just let you know. Now, this grew over time, so this might be the same for this person. Right now, they're still approaching it that way. At a certain point, you just want to be you, and you get tired of dealing with situations like that. 
I still don't mind requests all the time. I have situations where requests can really help you out. Like if you're playing at an event at a club at, in a town where you've never been before and you're having a little bit of a harder time to catch on to what their vibe is, what they're into, then a couple of requests can really help you to find like, okay, so that's what you're into over here. You understand what I'm saying? Like if you have a couple of people requesting a certain type of song, that's going to tell you a lot about what a portion of the crowd, not saying everyone, but at least a portion of the crowd is into. Um, so I find that it can be helpful in those situations. But uh, beyond that, no, not really. Now, if someone requests a song that I have and I normally play, but it's just the wrong time, I'll tell them that, exactly that. I'll tell them like, uh, yeah, I have it. I'm not going to play that now. It's just like it's either it's like way too slow or... Uh, most of the times it's the other way around and I'm still in a warm-up phase and they request a hit and I'll let them know, yeah, I'm playing that later. Now, they don't always like that answer because they request and they want to hear it now, but I'm not a jukebox. So, yes, with those hits, I know I'm going to be playing them later, but they're, they're just going to have to wait. I'm not going to just play a hit when you got 20 people in the club and one out of those 20 people wants to hear that hit right then and there. That track is being saved for later on when I have an actual crowd there to play to. Uh, so, yeah, that's why I wanted to talk about that. I just don't agree, but to each his own. And to be fair, it also really depends what market you're playing to. Like if we're talking about a normal club, that's different when you're playing um, in one of those bars situated in a, uh, a street where you just have tourist bars and where the bar owner just wants you to play whatever to keep the customer happy and keep them there, keep them drinking, you name it. I understand that situations can be differently, uh, can be different. So I can't really say because I don't know where this person is playing, but I just got tired of the not saying no and always be positive and let them feel as if you're going to do what they're asking, even if you're not going to do it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just done with that. And at the end of the day, it's also about I want to be able to just do what I came to do. And being a jukebox is not part of my resume. I have a skill where I can actually read the crowd. Uh, I do my research so I know what type of party I'm playing. So I know the type of music that is expected of me. I know how to build a party so I don't need people to come in with their personal requests because they want to hear something. Um, yeah, you, you, you get kind of tired of that. Now, there are situations, and I know I'm rambling about this now. I didn't know I was going to talk about this this long. But there have been situations where the vibe is so cool and you got such a good energy with the crowd that it's pretty obvious that they're totally into what you're doing, that they're actually coming up with all sorts of songs that fit perfectly with what you're doing. I don't have them often, but I had a couple of those parties where like every request that people were coming with was not a request from someone who wants to hear what they want to hear. They're like, oh, they're totally into what you're doing. And they're actually just letting you know, like, yo, you can play this, 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 and that as well. We're totally into what you're doing. At that point, it becomes a different thing. Then all of a sudden, we're just having a great old time together. But in most situations when DJs are talking about requests, we're not talking about those situations. We're talking about people coming up, asking things that totally make no sense with what's going on at that current moment. And even if you have 99% of the club rocking to what you're doing, you're always going to have that 1% that will come up to the booth and they're going to ask for songs that make no sense at that current time, make no sense at the event where you're playing at, um, and they're just doing it for their own personal interest because they feel that that's what they want to hear. And I got tired of just being the smiling DJ, lying to their face as if I'm going to please uh, that request when I'm not going to do that. You just checked out a video clip from my Share the Knowledge podcast. If you want to check out the full episodes, make sure you click on the link in the description box down below. If you're new to this YouTube channel, DJ TLM TV is all about the DJs and the producers. I try to provide you with as much value as I can. I do tutorials, tips and tricks, Q&A videos, product reviews, and a lot more. So if you like what you see, consider subscribing and make sure you activate the notifications as well. Peace. 
Bazoogle makes it easy to build a stunning website for your music in minutes. You can choose from hundreds of mobile friendly themes and then customize your design and content in a few clicks with Bazoogle's easy visual editor. Now, all the features you need for a professional website are already built in, including tools to sell your music and merch commission free, mailing list tools to grow your fan list and send newsletters, and integration to pull in content from all your online services, including Twitter, Instagram, and SoundCloud. I use Bazoogle to create the Share the Knowledge podcast website and that was very easy. Bazoogle plans start at just $8.29 a month and include your own free custom domain name. Now, if you want to try it out for free for 30 days, click on the link in the description box down below and be sure to use the promo code SHARE to get 15% off the first year of your subscription.